Hi, my name is Frederick. I work with Axflow. I'm going to talk today a little bit about Wolfisha Cherry Burrell ECP external circumferential piston pumps from SPX Flow. Most common maintenance with these units is changing the oil, or greasing the bearings, and it is absolutely critical that every time the gear case or the bearings are greased, that extra grease is removed from the chamber in between the bearings. Now, of course, begin, before you begin to disassemble the fluid head, you're gonna make sure that you have all your O-rings and your seals available, just in case you mess something up or find something under your investigation. And the first step is just to remove the pump cover. You always wanna use soft rubber hammers for any kind of maintenance on the pump in order not to damage the tight clearances within it. Pump cover should slide right off. There's a good chance to check for any kind of wear on the cover itself and particularly the o-ring on the pump cover. You'll note that there are two pins, different size, one larger and one smaller. Sometimes the larger ones on the top in this case, or can be on the bottom. And the pump, pump cover also has holes that are corresponding to those. So it's easy to tell which is which, which is top and bottom for your particular model. At this point, it's a good idea if you're using a socket wrench or the provided rotor wrench to locate the rotors so that one is horizontal and one is vertical and then do a visual inspection between the rotor tips. This should be equal. It's a quick adjustment for the timing. If it's possible at this point, it's a good idea to try to check your internal clearances. Clearances are given on page 46 of the instruction manual uh, and vary according to the size of the pump. The three clearances that should be checked using a feeler gauge are the rotor to body clearance, the back face clearance between the house and the rotor, and then the front face clearance as well. Normally take a shim and measure them. Then using a dowel of nylon or plastic, you go ahead and remove the rotors. Loose the rotor nuts. We recommend removing the O rings and the rotors and the rotor nuts every time you dig into the pump. Rotors should slide right out. And again, you kind of want to keep track of which rotors on the top and which is on the bottom and uh, place. I do this by placing the rotors in the pump housing. Again, the larger dowel indicating the top position. It can happen that when you're trying to get the rotors out, that they're stuck. So there's a trick for this. Loosen the body retaining screws, pulling the pump body onto the gear case. And then, of course, using our gummy hammer, tap the whole pump body forward onto the studs. This typically solves the problem and the rotor can then be removed. Placed again into its position in the pump cover. It's a good idea now to check the keys and the keyways for any kind of wear keyways both on the shafts 
as well as the rotors themselves. If there's any kind of significant wear, we should replace them. It's also a good idea at this point to look at the rotors and the pump body to see if there's any indication of metal to metal contact. This can be caused by a number of things, primarily a twisted shaft, uh, loose, uh, worn, or uh, improperly timed gears in the gear case, or uh, operation with loose rotor nuts. Pump house can be tapped off again. It slid directly off of the studs and laid down with a mechanical seal facing upwards. At this point, you can remove the seal seats and check, inspect the mechanical seals for any kind of damage, chipping, and replace them. Now it's time to look at the bearings, condition of the bearings. This is done in three ways. First is slack. You should be able to rotate each axle and have the other axle connect in immediately. There should be no slack in it whatsoever. If there is slack, it's probably an indication that your timing gears here are worn and need to be replaced. Next, you can load the shafts by hand up and down to about 15 kilos, 30 pounds. If you get any kind of wiggling or, or movement, that is a good indication that your bearings are shot and need to be replaced. And the last check is an axial test in and out. And again, there should be no movement. If there is movement that you can feel, it's an indication that you need to go into the gear case and remove and replace the bearings and then eventually reshin the entire pump. Quick and dirty maintenance video for you there. Good luck and uh, Godspeed.